Hello, friends, and welcome to another tabletop adventure from Queen's Court Games. My name is Alex, and tonight we will be finishing our story of Shane Ivey's Extreme Ophelia. This will be our finale in this series. If you have not seen episodes one through three, I recommend that you go back and check those out. Um, you can find them on our YouTube or under your favorite podcast app found under One Shots and Other Mischief. As always, if you would like to find links to the information about the scenario or about our cast, you can type exclamation point scenario or exclamation point cast to get that info. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast app, you can find that information in the show notes for this episode. Tonight, I will be joined in our mission by our wonderfully talented group of performers who will be playing our agents for this final night. And I will now go ahead and introduce them. <clears throat> Beginning with our FBI case officer, it is Agent Neem, who is played by Pooja. Hello, hello. Next, we have the muscle of our group, Agent Hemlock, being played by Killian. Hello, Governor. Then we have our burnt-out med student, who maybe didn't sign up for any of this, but has definitely been pulling her own. It's Agent Sage, played by Abigail. Hello. And last but certainly not least, you have heard me say her name multiple times, and you've probably seen her in many more productions playing our hacker and technological engineer. It is Agent Rosewater, played by Aubrey. Bonjour. Excellent. Excellent. All right, everybody. So before we begin, please do know that Delta Green is an adult horror game and contains some elements that viewers may find uncomfortable or objectionable, including blood, gore, body horror, drug and alcohol use, eating disorders, gun violence, medical horror, mind control, and paralysis. Please consult a full list of content warnings by typing an exclamation point safety in the chat or finding them in the show notes. All of us have agreed to hold ourselves accountable to a code of conduct that will ensure our table remains a safe and respectful environment for collaborative storytelling. Well, now that we have gotten all of that taken care of, let's go ahead and dive into the finale of our playthrough of Extreme Ophelia. We open tonight's session not in a cold open about somebody else in our story, but of Agent Rosewater, who has just dropped the towels off in the room where Agent Hemlock and Agent Sage are working on patching up Agent Hemlock. Agent Rosewater has been told that her husband is waiting for her in her hotel room. When we last left off, she had opened the door, and we saw a person who most assuredly is not her husband, which would be doubly so because this is neither her boyfriend and she is not married. The person that we see sitting on the bed, though, looking at her as she opens the door, is her, we'll say, lover, Micah. He stares at you with, it looks like one of amusement and care, um, if that's something that you can entirely believe. As he says, you're here. Come on in, shut the door. Is, uh, is that um, just one slight moment of hesitation before, you know, I do shut the door because I'm thinking about just being like, other my coworker is being patched up next door. Lovely. <laughs> it's definitely something to worry about. Um, but mm -hmm. are you really focused on any of that in this moment? No, not really. It's okay. just probably not ideal. Sure, but you know, he'll try to make the best of the situation. Yeah. Especially since after you do close the door, you see the grin that has crossed his face so many times before when he gets exactly what he wants and stares at you and says, you know that I'm always going to find you no matter where you go, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Good. And he approaches you and puts his hand on your face 
I would definitely say that this gesture is one that normally we would consider to from if we were watching a movie, we would consider this to be a very romantic moment as the uh, one of the characters brushes the hair aside from the other and it's, you know, they're going to kiss and everything else like that. That's not really what is conveyed through this. It's not any sort of care. It is power over another person as he kind of whispers into your ear and now I want something from you. And as Agent Rosewater's night unfolds, whether that's for the better or for the worse, I guess we'll have to find out later, we will cut over to Agent Neem's room. Now, Agent Neem, I believe you had left Agent Sage and Agent Hemlock to take care of the gunshot wounds earlier, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So it stands to reason that you are most likely trying to get some rest, especially after an extremely difficult day. And you've gone through your routine and set out your items and things like that and tried to make it so you'll have as restful a sleep as possible. But as the night unfolds and Maybe you hear some commotion from the room next to you. Maybe you don't. But you do manage to start to drift off to sleep. And as you do, we see this look on your face of concern or perhaps pain. And we dive into Agent Neem's dream. Our dream opens in a massive hospital waiting room. Looks almost identical to the one that you were in just yesterday. But this one is like the size of three football fields. It's huge. And it is full of people. And as you look around, it's a little bit odd because where earlier you may not have spent much time looking at the people certainly not enough to commit their faces to memory um that doesn't really matter now because they don't show up like people they're just fuzzy humanoid shapes making sounds that are like you're listening to them through a phone of people talking and motion everything else like that that you hear normally in a hospital waiting room as you are looking around, though, you see Josiah in the crowd. But the thing about him is that he doesn't look the way that you normally see Josiah. I think it's fair to say that normally when you've encountered Josiah, he is maybe shoulders slumped. Um, this look of somebody who has been broken, perhaps at some point. Um, maybe somebody who, who served another person in their life uh, was a look of subservience or something like that. Is that is that kind of what I'm guessing with Josiah normally? Yeah. Josiah always looks like he's waiting for somebody to, to kick him while he's down. Yeah. And that is a thing that happens to people, can happen to people. But... With the Josiah you see here in your dream, that's not who you see. You see this man with back stiff, shoulders back, um, carrying himself with an air of confidence, like he knows exactly why he's supposed to be there. And that might be a little bit... Maybe, maybe there's a part of you that hopes that that's good. Granted, it's something you've never seen before, but it's a hope. Maybe... Maybe it's a hope of yours that he will eventually end up that way. Um, but you see him going around and talking to people. Um, he hasn't really noticed you at all. This is your dream. Would you like to go talk to him? Yeah, I think I'll call his name as I walk over. Sure. As you approach him, um, you see a look of acknowledgement as he looks up at you. Um, again, is standing exactly the same way that we have described. Um, and what he tells you is 
that he's happy to see you and that his life is so easy now because he's found his true direction and purpose. Do you say what do you mean? (laughs) He says, well, I, I have a reason for being here now. And as he says that he offers his hand to one of the people in the waiting room and what you see is their face start to take shape uh it's not a person that you know by name but definitely a face you've seen before and the things that you see played across this face are at first a look of admiration for being helped up then a look of horror on their face which then changes to a blank stare like a drone and as you see that just slack look on their face you are reminded that that's exactly how the man woods looked when he was walking towards you firing off rounds completely un uncaring of his own personal safety josiah hasn't doesn't seem bothered just smiles and starts to walk over to another person. Oh, fuck no. I did not save you from one cult for you to start another. <laughs> or join another. I don't give a fuck. Sure. What do you want to do to try and stop him? I am going to, like, reach down to my side. Um, like, like that instinct to, instinctive reach for a holster. Um... You just find that you are in a hospital gown when you reach down. And you do, he does see you do this motion, which he just smiles and offers his hand to another person who takes it. And you see the same progression. The thing about him, though, and you're looking at this a little bit closer now, is that smile across his face. And what starts to happen is you see these cuts developing across his face um as he progresses and as he looks touches somebody another comes and cuts into his face and you in this dream you normally would be able to try and stop him you maybe you're aware of how to take control over your dreams but that's even if you did you are a spectator here as josiah grabs another person by the hand and pulls them up And he continues speaking to you. And the thing that I want you to notice about his voice is that his voice takes on almost, almost like the sound of an insect's wings buzzing in the background that gets progressively louder as more cuts develop across his face. And he is telling you just the same things that he has found his true calling now that he serves the people of the heavens and that all of life is something that of their creation and something that should be celebrated i'm just gonna impotently scream no stop it it's not right you know it's not right fight it fight them that probably would work on Josiah most of the time, but I think any thought that would go through his head of doing anything otherwise is kind of tossed out the window as you, with these cuts, his skin begins to, like, heal from his face and kind of move with the buzzing that you're hearing in his voice. Uh, it gets progressively louder as he, that buzzing overtaking his tones, as he tells you that in reality, humanity was a mistake. Beings of the stars are more powerful than we can possibly imagine. We were just a byproduct of some experiment, nothing more. Just apes screaming on a rock hurtling through space. But they showed me the truth. They showed me how insignificant we are in the expanse of the universe. And I came to realize we're nothing but meat. 
powering the machine of our world, a world that has been here long before us and will be here long after. They've shown me the truth of the stars, and they've offered me the chance to go with them. And uh, no matter your protests, no matter anything, he comes towards you and places a hand on your face in definitely a more affectionate gesture, not in one of romantic or anything else like that, something you would do to somebody you care about. And he looks you in the eyes, and when you stare back at him, the face that was Josiah is no longer there. Actually, it's not even discernible as a human anymore. It's just eyes and a mouth and skin going off in different directions, along with the muscle tissue and fibers of the face. And he says to you in that almost dr- almost deafening drone of buzzing, if you want the truth, I will be waiting for you. And it'll be here when you wake up. And that's when you are awoken by a cell phone call. And I wake up and like heart is racing. Like this is like been running sprints for 45 minutes straight. Mm-hmm. Like sweat pouring down my face because it is definitely only sweat and not tears. Definitely. Absolutely yes. no tears <laughs> that Neem would admit to anyone. It's okay. You're in the privacy of your own room. It can be anything that you want it to be. But uh-huh. no matter what, and no matter what you're going through, that phone is going to continue to ring, ring, ring. Like, one deep breath, two deep breaths. Like, hook. Okay. Clears their throat, picks up the phone. Neem. Agent Neem? Yes. This is Alicia Smith. Um, we met earlier at the uh, the sheriff's office. Yes, of course. I remember you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know exactly what's happening, but uh, I'm starting to think that your theory has a little bit more grounds, but I think you need to be informed of what's going on. Uh the information that was found by your database through Agent Rosewater about uh, Dr. McCaslin, or McCaslin, Dr. McCaslin. Uh, that information was passed along to the sheriff um, because it's from their database. Uh, the sheriff recognized the person and the corporation that they worked for and made some calls. Um, after those calls were made, the company has started to tear down and has said that they're moving their operation elsewhere. The only reason that I know this is because there were a lot of people from here that were instructed to go and assist with that. Now, I don't know what's going on from there. I have no idea. But again, I wanted to give you this piece of information because... I don't know what their plan is for you all. Um, They said that there was some complication with you yesterday, and but they wouldn't go any further into it with me. Well, I very much appreciate that heads up. And Smith, Mm -hmm. it might be a good time for you to find another town to be in. You see her sigh, and it's like, yeah, I'm thinking that's the case. Watch your uh, back as you leave. Likewise. And she'll hang up the phone. Okay. Gonna make the rounds to the other rooms. Sure. As you open the door, though, there's a note waiting for you on the door. It is written on a... Uh, it's actually a Holiday in Hotel notepad. Um, but Dude. it says that it's from <laughs> the front office saying that a package arrived for you in the evening and that please come and get it. Okay. I'll take the note with me. Bang on some of the doors. Sure. Uh, yeah, we got to get up. Yeah. Shake a leg. They are packing up and moving out. 
Agent Rosewater, I think you're probably the first one in line here. So the you hear a loud banging on the door. Um, I'm not sure what your night entailed. You don't need to tell us specifics. I'm sure we can imagine. But I would say that you wake up. Um, does Micah sleep on top of you in these scenarios? Or where is he? Yeah, I, I get the I get the feeling that it's probably a sleep on top of. Yeah, so he's kind of draped over you, basically, for lack of a better description. Uh, but yes, you are told by your, uh, well, by one of the agents here that you need to get up. Yeah, going to try to do it as quietly as I can uh, to, as to not wake him. Sure. So I don't have to explain more things. Absolutely. Are you going to do anything about your hair that appears to be a mess? I am going to grab a hair tie and tame it into a bun the best I can. Sure. Um, it's still not going to be great, but for a moment I think about taking a shower, but then it's also like, that's going to make noise. That'll wake my cat. Then I'll have to explain why I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. That is Would much rather questions. just ex make up a lie later than have to explain now. Absolutely. I would say that that hair tie is going to be doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I would say that you have a decent amount of confidence in the way that you've presented yourself. We'll see how other people kind of determine that. Um, as you pick up your phone, are you just quickly heading out the door? Um, is there like, uh, any, like, is there a notepad in this room? Yes, there is. You find a le small legal notepad. Mm. Uh, I'm going to write on it a note of, sorry, I have to head to work. Mm -hmm. I'll be back later. Uh, it's just, and then there's like an idea of just like it's better the less I say the better that is true I'm heading to work I will be back later sure you leave that somewhere that he reasonably will find it especially after he wakes up wondering where you are and also the maybe slight more than slight frustration at the fact that you've left without saying anything to him but in reality I don't think he's the really important thing here. No, no, he's not. <laughs> yeah. And kind of add to that complication a little bit as you exit the door with your things in tow and you look and you see that there is a text message from your mother. The text message from your mother saying that it says, I hope you already know this, but Simon asked for our permission to ask you to marry him, and we said yes. Just a text message. There. You, you don't have to stare at it. What's He's the... not gonna respond to it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stare. I'm gonna like look back over my shoulder, and then it's just like we're gonna deal with that later. Mm hmm. Okay. We will. Oh yeah. Next. <laughs> Agent Hemlock and Agent Sage. Uh, Agent Sage, did you leave your patient or did you sleep in the same room? I don't think I would have left my patient. Okay. Um. So, yeah, probably sleeping in the same room. Lots of, like, monitoring. So she's... But there's there's not, like, a chair in this room, huh? Because they don't... No, it's, no. it's nothing like that. It's, like, two, two twin-sized beds, oh, okay. basically. It's not very... There's not a whole lot going on there. So I think she's like the other twin bed. She's had it like she's like sitting against the wall that it's at um, asleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Sure. I'd say you probably didn't get a very restful night's sleep. Um, no. We won't make you use exhaustion rules here because we're not that mean. But uh, <laughs> you uh, do need to get your patient up. So 
Hemlock is snoring extremely loudly. Hmm. You were probably pumped full of the best painkillers that you can get in a 7-Eleven. Or Circle K, excuse me, we said it was a Circle K. There was probably a ton of those little packs of Aleve, uh, maybe some of those like strange pills. You're not really sure what they do, but maybe could compound the pain relief somehow. Like, yeah, there's a cocktail. Some z just to yeah, make sure yeah. she yeah. could sleep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, some z Absolutely. You are, you were knocked out. So, yeah, you, what are the two of you doing, basically, as you get up? Like, what's, what are we seeing, the two of you? I think that Agent Sage is very intimidated by Agent Hemlock. Actually, very intimidated by all the agents here, but she finds probably, like, she wishes she could, like, poke Agent Hemlock awake with, like, a yardstick, but there's nothing like that, so she uses a pen instead from her <laughs> from her backpack. That works. And is, like, holding it at arm's length. <laughs> <laughs> that works sure you uh you're doing that uh does that actually work agent hemlock or there's like a break in the snoring for a second until she rolls over on her other side and then that's what wakes her up because it pulls mm. at <laughs> the, the wounds sn- yeah oh oh fuck getting shot is a bitch oh oh I I say, do we do we gotta go? Yeah. How are you doing? I mean, I can walk, and she like rolls off onto the floor on all fours, and slowly uses the bed to push herself up, and like does some half-ass stretches, and is like, I'm good to go. Oh, it's not recommended that you stretch after the day after you get shot. Eh. It's just a flesh wound. And she, like, doesn't even bother with grabbing the leather vest or anything. Like, she goes out in her pajamas and just goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get dressed in the car. It's fine. You know, take a couple wet wipes. Just dude shower it up as you go out. It's fine. Uh, Agent Sage, is this your first person who's been shot that you've treated? Absolutely. This is the first person who's been shot (laughs) that... Agent Sage has treated, and she's so concerned that she didn't do a good job. I mean, that's, I mean, the infection might come later, but I mean, they ain't dead, so you made it that far. Congratulations. I am a lifesaver. Exactly. You've done more than every, and Samantha, and Terry, and all those other Gosh. assholes in class that think things are so much better than you are. Terry never shuts up about clinicals in the trauma unit. Exactly. You're not even sure that Terry's been to any of that shit. He's probably just watched shows. Yeah. But it's fine. You have the real thing here. Granted, I don't know that you could actually tell people about any of this, but you have done it. When that lab comes up, that the person who has been shot with 556 five, ammunition and needing to get it out of their skin, you are going to be a star at that for some reason. And, and they can stretch the next day. Exactly. Boom. Perfect. So, yeah, the two of you rise and get out of your room. Uh, Agent Neem, you successfully have woken everybody up, I will say. In the time, you've probably made it to the front office. Uh, you don't see the kid that you were working with before. This is a older woman. Um, and she... Did you take the note with you that was left on the door? Yeah. Okay. Sure. It's... Uh, I didn't go back in my room to... <laughs> sure. To dish it, so... Uh, she says, oh, good. You got my letter. Yes, I have something for you. And she goes to reach for this thing, and she's like, it's very heavy. Could you just come get it, please? It's leaning up against the wall back here. Oh, sure. Absolutely, man. Sure. So you're going to round that corner. You are going to find a crate, like a shipping crate. Looks decently long, uh, but a bit deep. Uh, You would have some semblance to know that this is most likely something that is dangerous usually that because you can see the way that it's packed um i would also say that you see a green triangle painted onto the box um which you would have been told before that this is the symbol for the program um so stands to reason that they 
probably intended to send it to. He says, well, yeah, they, a man came by in the night and he dropped it off and told me that uh, you would need it. His timing was very good. Thank you so much. Of course. Will you all be checking out today? Well, let me double check, um, you know, with the rest of my team. Sure. And I think, you know, we might just stay one more night. Okay. Well, as you know, we have the free HBO and uh, we don't have breakfast, but there's a Circle K around the corner and they got some pretty good stuff. And, you know, uh, yeah, we're, is we're a working on Circle K. But we are working on a pool here at First Contact. So, you know, if you want to come back in the future and want to tell your friends, maybe leave us a nice review on Yelp. Well, definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, she's definitely going for the hard sell here, but it's fine. She's old. You can kind of dismiss that. Uh, so, I'm surprised she knows what Yelp is. She's heard about pick it. Pick up one corner of this crate and drag it out. It's out of all of us. I am not the strong one here. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably about 40 or 50 pounds. So it's not the lightest thing in the world. Uh, but yeah, you do manage to get it outside. Um, I would say as you're dragging it out, I would say everybody else is probably outside. Are any of you going to actually help Agent Neem or are they just going to Agent Hemlock sees this and is like, all right. And just out of habit, walks over no. and picks up a side. <laughs> no, no, oh! no, no, no. <laughs> I will, being a strength of nine, will attempt is, to help. That is more strength than name has. Oh. <laughs> Many hands makes light work. So yeah, you all uh, carry this thing over uh, like it's an enormous piece of granite and set it down in the back of the truck. Uh, it's great. You do have the ability. You would have a tool here to be able to pop this open if you wanted to. Crowbar is easy enough. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna do and that? Gonna anyone do else but Hemlock? <laughs> mm-hmm. Would you like to open it? Oh yeah! Okay. Bring it. <laughs> when you do open it in the parking lot, um, first thing that you're gonna see on top is two Kevlar vests. Um, it looks like they kind of like one size fits all. Basically, is the best. Like they do make different sizes of them, but they've kind of just been generalized and put in there for the. For all of you, and assumingly, um, you do pull two of those out. When you pull those two out, it looks like they are sandwiching the rest of the things that are in here, which is two AK 47s. There are eight clips of ammunition total of fully loaded 7.62. Uh, so, fully ready to go. Um, we'll give you some time to inspect them later after you've pulled everything out. Uh, there are two uh, flashbangs. Uh, these are... Uh, you are familiar with them and how they work, I would say. Uh, one trauma kit. Uh, this is for... This is mainly for reference of Agent Sage being our medical and per- personnel. Uh, this trauma kit is... Uh, it's more than just a regular like first aid kit. Um, this would be for heavier injuries and things like that. Um, there are things in here to help that you would reasonably think would help with gunshots, um, more bandages, tourniquets, things like that. Um, not anything that you would be able to, that would require like actually going to a hospital for, because there's only so much you can do, but you do think you could stay, you wish you had this last night, but you do think you could stabilize much more easily with this. Um, underneath that, or next to that are four high-powered flashlights. Uh, looks like they have brackets on them so they can be rail-mounted, which upon looking at your AK-47s, you do see the rail. It's on there as well, so you can kind of clip it on there. Um, and then two more Kevlar vests. And that's what you have in your box of tricks. Hemlock will pull out the uh, Kevlar vests and Okay, everybody gets one of those. Anybody else know how to use these flashbangs? Are you going to no, be doing this no. in the middle of the parking lot? <laughs> she realizes that, like, because she's out of it. She's really and not the good it, sp- Oh, <laughs> It takes a moment for the realization of the felony of wearing a suit of body armor and doing things, but it's fine. 
We'll just. I we'll had to put sure. it on. I put him off to the side. <laughs> so we're not. <laughs> I, we're all gonna. We're all gonna vest up now. Sure. So y'all can get used to how nasty these things are. Uh, That's valid. And yeah. and then we'll deal with the rest of this in the car. Yep. Do Anybody you... asks, flash the badge. Mm-hmm. Hemlock mm-hmm. is absolutely putting the Skyblar vest over her pajamas. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sure. I I would say so. With the Kevlar, you can wear it under your clothes. Like you could have like another layer of clothes underneath to wear it underneath them, mm-hmm. uh, and it would be a little bit harder for it to be detected that you're wearing it. If you would like to do that, um, yeah, typically I I that's what people do. Typically, they're I'm worn under things. Wearing a hoodie, so Same. you know, I'll take off my hoodie, put it on, put the hoodie back on. You could wear a full like. IED dis- diffusal fucking suit <laughs> over the underneath that and still probably get away with it. So, yeah, you are you are set with your body armor that um, this isn't a movie. It's very uncomfortable. It's <laughs> it's basically it straps to your chest and then squishes every single part of your body into a nice rectangle that it can then protect as much as possible. And that's it. That's they are horrendously uncomfortable. Hemlock pulls on like stretchy jeans mm-hmm. and then throws on just like a random hoodie that she had with her and it's like, all right, good enough. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's uh you all put on your vests, you get your equipment ready. Um where I would say that Micah does not wake up during this whole procedure. So where would you all like to go. Um, I, I have filled everyone in on the call from Smith. Um, mm-hmm. And personally, I think if we don't hightail it over there, then they're going to be gone. Since the sheriff is dirty as hell. Yeah. That might require yeah. some actual investigation from the federal government after, but you know, for now, this is a bit of a bigger problem. So yeah. That is All right. Hemlock starts to climb into the driver's side. Neem, you should probably drive still. It <laughs> goes to the back seat. <laughs> well, you know, in the meantime, you get to you know fiddle with your new toys. It's true. Who's the passenger princess now? I guess it's me. (laughs) (laughs) One who has to operate the GPS. All right. I'm the most qualified to operate the GPS. Mm -hmm. This is true. That is that. I'll unlock features in this GPS you didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be impressed with your ability to do that on like a Tom Tom, but you know, (laughs) it's fine with. I don't think we need you to like, you know, be a this super car hacker. Forever has free satellite radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. You turn on Sirius also, XM. <laughs> also, the the voice is is Scottish now. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, it's you and McGregor <laughs> comes. <on. laughs> I can't properly do a Scottish accent enough to say they turn left, but. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you punch in the Benthic Corp address uh, that you have been given. Um, it's got government contracts, so it's in the mountains, basically, and kind of unlisted. Um, but yeah, you all drive over to there, and I would say it's reasonably early in the morning. Um, actually, just for a little bit of character build, what uh, are you guys eating anything before you go out? Do you stop at that Circle K on your way out after you've Put on your body armor and you're ready to fucking go and you're gonna go grab your uh you know silly little drink and pastry or what are we what are we looking at gotta drink another monster <laughs> you just get one for the whole car i think at this point i think we've established yeah. that everybody's okay yeah so um <laughs> i toss my backpack around mm-hmm. there's enough beef jerky in there to last us days yeah <laughs> Is that I don't. After everything we've seen, I'm not really trusting food around here or water around here. So anything that's canned and comes from somewhere else, or you know, beef jerky. We're gonna survive on beef jerky. 
I mean, I would say that the gas station has got you covered if you're looking for things that will not expire until the human race has stopped existing. So, yeah, you find your cans of monster. You find some very generic looking, maybe Oreos at some point. Uh, they say big taste on them. Uh, upon eating it, you realize that that's a lie, but it's fine. Mm. They are food, at least as far as you can wait, you as far as you can gather. They are uh, carbohydrates and calories. It, look, uh, they look. might be carbs. <laughs> <laughs> they are certainly substance. <laughs> I don't think Agent Rosewater has like is one of those people who has to probably in her regular life be kind of like, "Hey, did you eat today? Did you eat today?" Because she'll just forget. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I won't make you make a constitution roll on your way driving over there, but I'm not driving, so I, you know, <laughs> that's if I true. pass out the passenger seat. Somebody's like, "Here, here, Rosewater beef jerky." Mm-hmm. All right, so you've got the necessary essentials of water, energy, substance, and something resembling food, uh, and you all drive to the Benthic Corp. Now, upon approach to the Benthic Corp. You can definitely tell that this probably used to be a larger operation. Uh, the gates are just open and there's nobody in the guardhouse at the moment. There is next to nothing on the outside of the building, but you're not really sure if that was the way it was prior. Uh, you do see that there is a parking garage down the front drive and to the left, uh, to the right, looks like there's some dumpsters. Again, nobody's out here when you get here. It's not too early in the morning. Uh, the sun is creeping up over the horizon, but uh, there would normally be people here. Looks like Smith's info was good. I would say... Uh, mm-hmm, go ahead. Just go in the front door. Well, we did we did that already with the morgue. Maybe, maybe different approach this time. It is a large government facility. You could reasonably get in. Th- There's most likely an entrance to the parking garage. The entrance to the front door is probably something that leads to a lobby um, with a lot of locked doors. So, Parking garage. Parking garage. Okay. Although we should probably not leave the car down there because I have great distrust of parking garages in general. That's fair. It's like mm-hmm. not enough exits. Don't want, yeah. Don't want to get our vehicle stuck. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can be blocked off from like one exit. You know. Yeah. Um. Go ahead and make me a drive check, Agent Neem. We'll see how well you've done with this in the future. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't remember if hitting my number exactly is a success. That's okay. That's okay. Yes. It's it's still a success. So you oh, did good. hit it. Yes, okay. yes. I got a 40 and my drive is a 40. Excellent. Excellent. You find a spot that you think is safe. We'll see if it is later. Well, maybe. Rude. Okay. <laughs> okay. You all have found a spot that you can park in. Um, how are we going into the... I will say that looking around at the parking garage, you don't immediately see other cars here at the moment. Um, however, you're not sure if people will show up, not sure if people are coming back, uh, but at the moment you are alone. Hemlock doesn't want to risk the bigger guns uh, in town, so we'll just go in armed with the handgun. Sure. I will say you're in the mountains uh, if that changes your decision at all, but uh, handguns are fine. I would say that you don't know what's in there. Um, you are welcome to take your handguns. That's perfectly fine. The rifles can stay here. And you can tuck them under nicely in the little spare wheel wheel well in the back of your car. I'm actually going to... Hemlock, I think now is the time for force. Okay. And she picks up the gun <laughs> and, like, tests out which arm actually works better and is like, is your firing it's flung impaired? over her back? <laughs> is your firing impaired at all for you? 
Uh, I think it would be her left. I think it was her left arm I said was uh, the one that's impaired. So she shoots with her right, but it might not. Well, there might be a little bit of aiming issue. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you. we'll see how that plays in. But uh, yes, yeah. your stabilization of the firearm would be a little bit more difficult because this is a two-handed uh, mm-hmm. weapon. So, I yes. will also be bringing my gun this okay. time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sage, do you want my handgun just in case? I don't know how to. I don't know how to use. Are you asking um, rules wise or for real? I don't know how to use one. <laughs> There's a there is a twenty percent base, so you I do know. have a chance. <laughs> that, so with your twenty percent, basically, what that means is you've been to the range. You are vaguely familiar with how to fire a weapon. You're not completely terrible. <laughs> My dad took me to the range once so I could protect myself. Um, and then it, that never, we never followed up with anything. Just, just in case. Okay. Here, here there's a holster and like, I'm like, put the holster on her and stuff. So she's not just trying to shove it in her pants or something. <laughs> That's probably, probably not a good idea. What kind of uh pistol are you giving uh, Agent Sage? Is this a, it's just, pistol? it's, yeah, it's just the one that was given the FBI okay. service pistol. Okay. Yeah, Agent Sage, you now have a service pistol in your possession. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so you all have are locked and fully loaded to go into this seemingly abandoned facility. Uh, exiting the vehicle, getting ready, you will see a tunnel entrance that goes into the building. Um, trying the door, it is unlocked. Hmm. This isn't creepy at all. Hamlock opens the door anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. What you are greeted with inside is when Agent Smith said that they were tearing this place down, they tore it the fuck down. Like, there, you can see on the walls where signage used to be and things like that. And, like, they've even taken a lot of the high powered lights. There's just, you know, emergency lighting and things like that in some spots. Um, The smell that is in here is just of, it's very sterile. Like if you walked into a, uh, hmm, I would say doctor's office, but a doctor's office that has been freshly cleaned. That's, Mm. yeah, what you get in this long off-white hallway right is there a directory any wait do we know the name of the scientist did we actually hear this mm-hmm. okay you did is you there did a get their name. okay is there a directory for where the scientists offices are so what i will say is who among you wants to make the search roll to see if you actually find the office in a Not reasonable me. amount of time. I'm a 50-50 shot. I'm saying I'm also a 50-50 shot. Okay, well, decide among you who is going to be the one that flips that coin. My dad. You did, you did the drive. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did the uh, drive roll. I could do the search roll. Okay, go ahead and do that search roll, Agent Rosewater. 22. Okay, so with that, you do succeed. And what I will tell you is that you don't necessarily find a directory, but you are vaguely familiar with the layout of a basic government building and where things most likely are. Um, You do eventually find the office of Dr. Brent Carlson McCaslin. Um, I will also say you do this in a reasonable amount of time. It hasn't taken you a million years. Everybody else, you might have been helping with the search, um, but I would say a lot of your search is probably distracted by realizing that while Agent Rosewater has gotten her eureka moment, you can also tell that her hair is terrible underneath that hair tie that looks like it's trying desperately to show some semblance of modesty. Uh, You're not really sure why, but that's definitely what you see. Maybe there's... uh, you Can know. I roll a human uh, roll? <laughs> what's your What's your human tat? 
60. Are they like a, What's your, really like who, a bruise on yeah, my neck or who something? Who has really high human? Um, I also have 60. Okay. And then a uh, 50 in psychotherapy. I was 60 10. in psychotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those of you with a high human, uh, what you are going to notice on Agent Rosewater is the pattern of um, like a sheet that is still fading from the side of their face. So you can see the stitch marks along it. Uh, you can also see as she points her wrist around here has been like you can tell bruising from a hand that has gripped it extremely tightly. I just kind of like look over realizing I have my aviators on and do this over at Neem and kind of <laughs> you know what? And give you the speaking eyes that are like not the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both of you know exactly what the hell is going on. Do you know, Sa- Agent Sage? Do you have any humans or anything? I have a 10 in human and psychotherapy. <laughs> so I'm not, I think I'm messing with the flashlight. Yeah, you might see Agent Hemlock and Agent Neem speaking with their eyes, but you have no fucking clue what any of that's about. <laughs> like, that's, that flashlight sure is cool, though. So cool. Go so far <laughs> down the hallway. Mm-hmm. You have no idea how many lumens that is. You're going to have to look that up after and then geek out about it. <laughs> All right. You do find uh, Dr. Brent call McCaslin's office. I'm going to call him McCallson. Dr. McCaslin's office. So where the rest of the offices that you passed were obviously torn down. Uh, this one, not so much. Uh, you do see that the doctor's computer of all things is still there. Um, the way that they have this set up is most likely that the actual workers were supposed to take their own things down. Um, and Brent is apparently hasn't done that. Um, but yeah, you do see a machine. It's kind of, so it's set up in like a, you know, mount arm so you can move it around and it's mounted to the back of the screen. So it's not like a thing that you could easily rip out of here and take with you. That would take some work, but you could try and access it if you wanted to. Uh, Agent Rosewater. For the rest of you, there's a lot of kitschy shit uh, and some books and things like that. I would say, Agent Sage, you do see some... uh, You can... You've gathered by this point that this is a pharmaceutical uh, facility. Now, granted, you... How much do you have in pharmaceuticals? Or do you have that as a skill? I have a 70... In pharmacy okay yeah. yeah so you probably know all the shit like those massive latin names that they have set up for these <laughs> drugs like you know exactly what the hell that's supposed to do you know exactly what that's for like you so yeah you are in the facility that this company you probably even have heard of this company as being one that manufactures drugs um you mostly find a lot of booklets about dis- just development of drugs um, and before we get into the really spicy stuff that you find, Agent Rosewater, what do you want to do with this with this setup here? You, I would assume you would took your computer as well. Yeah, I got my laptop. Okay. Um, are you going to try to do anything to this computer? I'm going to try to get into it, see what information's on it. Sure. So pulling it up, uh, I will tell you what you get is you see a login screen for uh, Doctor McCaslin. Uh, you can see that the internet is not up, um, which if they are tearing down the facility, they probably took that out. Um, but it is there, it is on and it's at a login screen. So what would you like to do to try and get into this thing? You have the options of searching around to see if he's stupid and wrote it down on something. Uh, (laughs) You have the option of trying to use something to break in to it. If you have some sort of program or something like that, they can do that. Um, you can also just try to forcibly take this thing with you and look at it later. Um, I definitely think I have some sort of program or at least, you know, I know the like the ways to essentially like put a computer into safe mode so you could get around a login essentially mm-hmm. uh, using like a windows admin password or whatever i will uh because you're you are 
saying it that way, I will tell you how this will actually go uh, because it's a real tool. Uh, you have a hijacked version of a Windows uh, recovery disk. This is some usually something that's given to uh, Microsoft certified technicians. What this does is this has the ability to load the operating system onto the disk. And what it does is it gives you the ability to bypass passwords. Now, they are only local, which works for you in this scenario. But yes, I would say you do have that tool. You don't need to give me a role for this because at the present moment, you're not in a stressful situation. And you have computer science at like an 80, don't you? Yep. Yeah, so you... Yeah, it's my 80. Yeah, so you don't really need to roll for this. Uh, so you break in. Uh, his background is a picture of him at a golf course. He's got a polo that looks like it probably doesn't fit all that well. Uh, he's wearing loafers to a golf course. You see him. He's just kind of standing there in front of it and like holding his driver over his shoulder, uh, trying to look cool. I'm not really sure the type of person that would, you know, do this, but I'm sure you've seen at least one person like this on Facebook. But yeah. So that's, yeah. So that's what you get into there with. Um, what are you going to be looking for with his stuff? Um, kind of figure out like what project was he working on like what was his sure. th what was his thing what was he working on and like how that might like figuring out what he's working on and how that might be connected to why the fuck he was on that road sure so what i would say is you are going to get this information here uh agent hemlock and agent neem what are the two of you doing as agent sage and agent rosewater are really like flexing their muscles in this scenario I mean, Hemlock isn't really helpful in this situation, but mm -hmm. she's got a little bit in a cult, so she wants to look around and just see if there's anything that might catch her eye leaning that way. Okay. How about you, Agent Neem? Is there anything you want to be looking for, or are you just kind of standing guard? I think I'm just keeping an ear out this place really creeps me out with how empty mm -hmm. it is yeah because it's been mm -hmm. because it's been like 12 hours mm -hmm. and while i believe that companies have the ability to do this i'm staring at the evidence of it right now i'm also like believe that there's no way that they just didn't think that somebody would be coming Especially with mm -hmm. Smith saying that the sheriff mentioned that there was that we were a problem specifically. Yeah, it is odd. It's especially odd because you've been here for thirty minutes and you haven't heard anybody else. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are going to kind of keep watch, which is good. Uh, Agent Hemlock, you are looking around for some occult shit. Uh, what I will say that you find is that you find the office of a very typical cishet white guy. Uh, he might have some like, you know. Uh, talismans or something that he's purchased because he thinks it looks cool or something, you know, has no fucking idea what any of it's for. Uh, maybe has he... like something that's from Buddhism, something mm -hmm. that's from the Dene, something that's from the Vikings. <laughs> he probably had no idea about any of that. He might have some woo shit, like maybe he was dating somebody who was into that and maybe he's got like something, but yeah, not a whole lot. Uh, but Agent Rosewater and Agent Sage. Uh, the two of you are going to kind of reach the same conclusion with different pieces of information. What you get is that Dr. McCallson, or McCaslin, excuse me, um, was working with a Dr. Ghent, Dr. Laura Ghent. Uh, it's listed that the two of them were partners on some sort of project that they were working on, something about... Uh, and you get this from both the medical data of the tests that they were conducting and the basically journal that he wrote for himself. You can't access most of the files that he had, Agent Rosewater, because most of them were based on the server. Mm -hmm. But he is not super savvy with tech stuff, so he has written. Didn't think so. Yeah, he has written a word doc that's on there. That's basically his notes. Uh, that again. Probably shouldn't be available like this, but, you know, they are. So, yeah, you get this information that he was working with a Dr. Laura Ghent. 
and that they were utilizing the samples collected. Uh, it just says from the lake quotes. Um, and uh, it says that this te- and what you're going to get from this agent sage is uh, these tests are listed as happening in the basement of this facility. Uh, what you see is a lot of information about a progression of uh, basically using a fungi to uh, further the effectiveness of certain drugs um, because in pharmaceuticals you do use fungus sometimes. Uh, so yes, you, mm-hmm, exactly. Penicillin That's is one. fungus. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you do find the information of that. Basically you find these tests that were conducted. Uh, the thing that would probably not be alarming to you would be interesting is that this fungus is uh, effectiveness is like through the roof more so than penicillin more so than anything else you've seen in common uh common studies and things like that granted it might be something special that they do but you do find that to be a little bit odd Uh, but yes so you you two of you have reached the same conclusion which is that there is some sort of test facility in the basement um there is something called the lake and something to do with samples uh, also, this journal, Agent Rosewater, um, stops on the 20th of, um, excuse me, uh, stops on the 20th of February. It will also say you see that there's an entry on the 13th where uh, the doctor says, it's just one line. It says, fell into the fucking lake. That's it. And then on the 20th, the entry stop. And you know that he encountered the deputy on the 26th. So, a little bit less than a week. But yes, that's the information that you've gotten from uh, um, this man's office. Yeah, and I will, I will definitely be relaying it to people being like, yeah, that definitely appears to be um, they uh, found some sort of thing you know there's a lake uh there is a uh doing some tests in the basement something to do with fungus and medication and about a week before the encounter with the deputy his notes end after mentioning that he fell into the fucking lake i'm quoting exactly Mm -hmm. and agent sage maybe there's a tinge of just upset as agent rosewater is talking about your specialties in such an aloof manner but <laughs> yeah they've they've reached the same she's reached the same yeah. conclusion so yes that's the information that all of you have what would you like to do should should, should we take a look at what's in the basement yeah if there's anything left yeah Lovely. well it might hurt but probably should oh and stand it too long it starts walking <laughs> okay basement will be a little bit easier to find I won't make you roll a search roll to get it um I would say it takes you didn't about... take the buttons out of the elevator <laughs> <laughs> well this one has a basement. staircase yeah this one has a staircase uh there looks like there was a service elevator that went down there but you can't get it to work uh there's a staircase though that's like right next to it. So it's not hard to find. Uh, But yeah, you are, you all descending into the basement. Reluctantly. I would have also liked to make copies of all of the relevant files onto like a little flash drive or something. Well, Uh, yeah, there, there isn't a lot of them, but you at least (laughs) least the notes and whatever's on the, on that. So you get his notes you get some pictures that he uploaded from a vacation. Um, you get some pictures of somebody who he seems to be infatuated with. It's kind of weird that they're just in his picture folder. Uh, looks Very. Like it looks like he snipped them from Facebook or something like that. Like, you're impressed that he knows how to use a snip tool, but also creeped out. But wow, anyway. Soccer much? <laughs> well, that would be something you're very familiar with. <laughs> uh, so... As you all descend into the basement, uh, the thing that really starts to permeate your nostrils is you start to smell um, 
if you've ever been around water that has been still for a long period of time, like has started to develop that mold and that smell, that's what you smell, that smell of moisture and mold and everything else as you're descending the staircase. We got masks, right? This definitely ain't sanitary. <laughs> this feels like we should have masks. Masks and gloves, yeah. It might, but, you know, it's up to you. I would say you definitely go mm-hmm. get them. Yes. Okay. I mean, so. I feel like we probably brought some with us. Maybe they're yeah, in you, you uh, I mean, we we've, we've been dealing with something that yeah. seems to be spreading with inhaling things. So <laughs> sure. I would say that you have a a mask, a cloth mask that would be high enough grade that you would be able have- to. We do have the hazmat suits. If somebody wants to go put one you of those, you do on. have a hazmat suit. Which going down a staircase in a hazmat suit will be very interesting for you. But I would say that there is something that it's not necessarily a full blown respirator, but mm-hmm. it's like uh, you know something that ninety five, probably higher than that. Yeah, but it it's will do well enough. Yeah, in this scenario. Masks, so, gloves. Yeah, you uh, take the necessary precautions in your descent and you come to the door which is a push bar door doesn't isn't labeled uh trying it it does push so you could open it if you choose y'all ready no as ready as i'll ever be i'll give you to three rose water <laughs> so do you do your countdown no, I just opened the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you open the door, I think that that is an excellent moment for us to take a short break. So, everyone, we are going to take a short break. We will be back momentarily to continue our story of extremophilia. Don't go anywhere. Hello, friends, and welcome back. We are going to dive right back into our playthrough of extremophilia here and see what our agents do as they enter into the basement. So... When we last left off, all of you were pushing the door open in the basement, which again, as we've described, has been just permeated with the smell of moisture and mold and things like that. And as you open it up, the off-white of the rest of the building is gone. Down here, the things that you see are a bare concrete room and a massive pool of water on one end. It looks like there are several, like, apparatus things that are supposed to be hooked up um, hanging down. You can also see a series of offices off to the right, but that is the room as it appears before you. What would you like to do? Um, offices first, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Okay. As you all walk in, um, are you alert or how are you entering this room? Oh, yeah, totally at low ready. Mm-hmm. Like, this yeah. is. Hemlock has, like, the gun up with the one hand, just, like, mm-hmm. ready to try and shoot if need be, but is scanning and keeping an eye out for okay. any anomalous movement. Agent Rosewater, Agent Sage, I need to, the both of you to make a POW roll, please. So what that will be is your POW stat times five, and you need to roll under it. Okay. Which I think both of them are decent at. <laughs> yeah, I've got a 55. Yeah. A 37. You passed? Okay. Did you pass as well, Agent Rosewater? I got a five. Okay. So both of you passed. What I will say with that is the offices are more near the pool of water, and you manage to stifle the desire to go next to the pool first. Um. As you near the offices, though, uh, what you see is, and you're fairly near the pool at this point, um, you're probably like, I would say, 10 feet away. Uh, As you look into the offices, you see a woman standing there staring at the wall, and it's completely black inside, like the lights are off. She appears to be breathing, but you can tell from where you are. Something, something Blair Witch bullshit. Ma'am? The 
figure turns slowly to face you. Um, it is a woman in her about early 50s, <clears throat> I would say. Um, she has a name tag that says Dr. Gent. Um, she just stands there kind of staring at you. Uh, you're still a decent distance away from her, but yeah, that's currently what you're looking at. That's the person who was working with our scientist. Ah, uh, that's right. Was it also the person who his photos were snipped? No, that was a different okay, person. Different person, go. Yeah, yeah. Nope, Dr. Uh, you had no indication that, well, actually, Agent Neem and Agent Hemlock, you have no indication that uh, you have any reason to believe that Dr. Gent and Dr. McCallson were lovers in any, or McCaslin were lovers in any way. Um, seems that their relationship is purely professional, just by the general read of his office. But yes, she's standing there. She doesn't actually, like, say anything to you. She's just looking at you. Hemlock will move closer and keep the gun at the ready, but just like mm -hmm. trying to get her attention or anything. And she turns to you when you step forward. She's are looking you at you. Okay. Can you speak? A few seconds go by. Yes, I'm fine. I can speak. Gent, why did... what, what are you doing down here in the dark? And she looks over at the pools and looks back and she's like making sure the samples were taken care of. You are close enough to her now that you smell, and you wouldn't have gotten this from before, you smell a black mold smell coming off of this person. Uh, I don't mean to alarm you, but I think we need to get you to a hospital. Just say. I know what's happening to me. Then explain it to us, please. I'm afraid I can't anymore. She looks at you quizzically as she's like, I might have been able to before, but it seems that I can't now. Baby lady is creeping me out, y'all. Dr. Gint, did you partake of the samples in order to take care of them? Partake in what way? Ingest? No. Except into your body in another way? No, Dr. McCallson and I fell into the, she's searching for the word and she doesn't actually know what it is. Like? She doesn't understand that word, but she nods because you seemed sure of yourself. Um, That's not what we, we fell in and after we started exhibiting signs. Yeah. Then Dr. McCaslin left with one of them. One of and them. now I'm here. Hmm? And why are you still here? Where else would I be? Who, who did McCaslin leave with? Who's them? She is searching in her head and she points to where the pool is and says one of the sisters that's not creepy at all so um, why didn't you leave with the sisters I wasn't supposed to hmm. you, do you know where they're going she's searching her head um, she says to meet the messengers. Of course. Agent Neem, you get a phone call. 
I put it on speaker. It's the hospital. Uh, yeah. What name did you give them? I come up with another name just like that. <laughs> well, um, I think you gave them a fake name. I did. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave them the name of Joni Smith. Joni Smith. Okay. Yes, is this uh is this Joni? Speaking. Hi. Yeah, the um woman that you brought in um she left about 30 minutes ago. Uh we can't she's not a danger, so we can't like detain her. She's but she left. Did you see where she was going? Uh, she just started walking off into the plains, kind of south. Um, Dr. Gent has a look of, um, happiness and relief on their face at hearing that because it's on speaker. Have any of your other patients just gone south? Uh, not like that. No. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you for letting me know. Sure. Uh, do you want me to... Uh, Abe realizes he's like, because there's not really a whole lot he can do in this scenario. It's kind of up to you to take care of it in whatever way you see fit, but he wants to help you um, because you established a great rapport earlier. Um, like, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if she comes back. No, well, thank you. If you see her, you know... Outside the hospital, too? You've got my number. Sure. Uh, oh, one more thing uh, before before I let you go here. Uh, the nurses that were, um, were seeing her kept saying that she was, before she left, she didn't leave violently. She just left out the door. Um, but she was mumbling. And one of the nurses said that she was saying, I have to join him. I don't know if that means something to you. Uh, maybe you know that where she's going. Maybe you know where she's going to end up. But I, I don't think she's any in any position to be out on her own. Granted, we can't hold her against her will. So well, if you see her again, um, I have a sneaking suspicion that the him she was referring to was her late husband. So you might want to keep her on a suicide watch. Okay. Just if you could note that in her file in case you see it, her again. Yes. And he's definitely concerned because if that was the case, she would have been detained. Uh, Yeah. But you didn't tell them that, and that's okay. No, at the time, it was very much a, <laughs> this patient might be suffering an accidental overdose, in which case she also should have been detained. Did you but give you them know. her full name when you checked her in? You don't. You didn't have to. She could have just been unidentified. No, I think I would have given her her full name. Okay. Maybe given they them just, her full name. That's fine. Maybe they didn't put it together. That's okay. So yeah, they uh, take down information and uh, in the call. And you see Dr. Gant again. Maybe now you've noticed this look on her face of this happiness. Um, and she says, oh, she's gone with him to be part of the choir. Does that mean that she is coming here to be part of the choir? No, I don't think so. Where is the choir meeting? At the place where the song was sung. Can you tell us anything about this place? I'm sure I could have at one point. It's a strange thing when your mind starts to fall apart. It's something we've researched for years with that disease. Never thought it would go like this. It's fascinating. Hmm. Hemlock is going to inch towards this pool and just see if there's anything that looks alien or out of place in it. Sure. So you've she's you've weird left. Her out. <laughs> yeah, you've left the doctor. That's fine. Uh, you head towards the pool. It uh, is a clear liquid. 
looks like it's water. Uh, the sisters, which you're guessing is what Dr. Gant was referring to, are these um, metal cradles that look like they used to hold something. Uh, by the you, what you can tell of mechanics, it would have been submerged into the water, and you can see the chains on the top where it's been like drug up. Um, everything is very, very clean in this water. There's no sign of any life, no algae, no mold, no nothing. But yes, there are three cradles. All of them are empty. Is there a janitor's closet down here? Uh, looking for one, you do not find one down here. Yeah, just curious. Yeah, there's not. They might if come this, down here to clean up, but it's not a whole lot. Is <laughs> this water, if this water is so clean, where is the overwhelming scent of stagnant water and all that coming from? Is it still coming from this? or You want to get close to it? I'm going to do it. <laughs> I got to know. The curiosity is going to kill me. <laughs> so you get close like to the water. The water won't. <laughs> yeah. You get close to the water and what you smell, you're very close to it. Now. And you are looking into this pool. And let me ask, does Agent Hemlock have uh, thalassophobia? No. Okay. Well, maybe Agent Hemlock will after this. Um <laughs> You stare into this pool and you start to smell that smell that you were smelling earlier. You also smell rust and some things that you can't really identify. The thing about this pool that becomes troubling to you is you can't see the bottom of it. It just sinks into an inky blackness below. And if you Put your hand, if you're close enough to the water, it feels like it's extremely cold. But again, it's up to you whatever you want to do to it, but you cannot see the bottom of it. You're not sure what's down there. Looking at the cradle, you do see that the chain is long enough that it could submerge it a decent distance down there. This is a thing that's. This, this is really deep. I'm gonna guess it connects to the lake bullshit. Um, go yeah. ahead and give me. Let's see. Go ahead and I want you to make me a stability check, please. Forty-seven under sixty-two. You managed to pass. I will allow you. To make an athletics roll, please. At least I'm good at that. <laughs> Ish. 30. Does that pass? Under 50. Under 50. <laughs> you fall over, but you catch yourself on the lip of the pool. And you don't go all the way in. But your hand has now touched the liquid, which is extremely cold. You're able to pull away. I assume, unless you want to go swimming. No, no. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I start to back away now. <laughs> yeah. After you do that, uh, the doctor has been looking at you through the glass uh, from the office. Uh, if anybody's still in there with her, um, you'll hear her say, Oh, looks like we have another person. <laughs> I'm looking at my hand. I'm like, just touch it. Fuck. Sage, did you look at my hand. I, I, mean, I don't want to touch, touch the water. It. I don't want to touch the water. You don't got to touch it. Just look. Okay, <laughs> I'm looking at it. <laughs> it looks like your hand. Is there anything different about my hand? <laughs> no. As far as you know, it looks exactly the same as it did. Outwardly, there's yeah. nothing different. This is kind of terrifying, but all right. If I start to fall apart like that, just fucking shoot me in the head. Um, Speaking of, mm -hmm. I feel like at this point we can trace back a line of contagion. 
Yeah. Are you asking the doctor that or? <laughs> yes. Um, to Sage. Oh, sorry. Oh. I thought you were meant Ghent. Go ahead. Oh, no. I mean, the, our doctor. Our team doctor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yeah, this, that makes sense. Um, does that mean we can go now? Uh, we got to clean up a little bit. What do you want to do about gesture towards the pool? What do you want to do? Hey, doctor. Gent. Mm-hmm. Uh. Does that lead to, and I gesture back towards the lake, does that lead to the sisters? She looks over and says, no, they were in their cradles. Okay. Does the pool connect to any other water? Oh, I don't remember. I think it used to go somewhere. I don't recall. Well, if this thing's going to take me over, I guess we better be quick about this. Um, I mean... I think we, we should, can't um, risk, like, this getting out anywhere else, so we can't just blow it. Now we're going to have to call in the some larger munitions to take care of this area. But in the meantime, we know that it's infectious through people now. Or it seems like it. Are you saying this in front of Ghent, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, as you're speaking to each other, uh, Ghent hands you, Hemlock, a bottle of, like, uh, medication. It's unlabeled. Is it pills, or as I shake it, or liquid? It's pills. What, what, what does this do? I don't remember. It was important, I think. I'll open the bottle and just get out one pill, and is there any distinguishing marks about it? No, it's unmarked. It's a gel cap of some kind. I mean, Sage, you could probably figure out what it is with time and shit, but... I don't, I don't think I should take it from the crazy lady, but... I was... no, it's the, the fungi increases effectiveness, and if that has the fungi in it, if they made drugs with the fungi, then it's going to increase the effectiveness of the water you touched. Uh, unless it's like... It, it could be a thing that... Yeah, it's, it could it be a could thing... It could be an inhibitor? It could, it could be... be... An in... Then why is she like that? It may only have effectiveness up to a point. Maybe that's why she can't tell us what it is, because it's an inhibitor. If this was a thing that sped Are the thing along. Are you asking her that? <laughs> I, I mean, we're, I we're think saying I it in front of it. This conversation <laughs> sure. in front of her. Uh, yeah, so Dr. Ghent, hearing all of you fight, is like, There's, they were supposed to. They slow it down. That gives me very little hope, but Sage, should I take this? I can't. In good faith, advise anyone to take an unmarked medication. But you do you? I was going to say, are you going to try? Doctor's and, prescription, uh, you do you? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, are you going to try and pharmacy your way out of an unmarked pill? That's not going to work. <laughs> no, I don't even want to touch it. So, okay, okay. Somebody with. Search. I'll be, I'm still freaking out. But I'll be like, somebody look and see if there's any notes on this that uh, maybe Sage can look at. You don't. I don't need to give you notes. There's nothing in here. She was alone. Mm. Yeah. I mean, is this, it she produced this from her coat pocket. If there's a. T- all right. All right. Let me find a. Let me find a. D two. All right. Choir is. If it's a one. I take it. If it's a two, I don't. Go for it. It's a two. I'm taking it. Okay. 
you take the pill. That's it. You've Bye. taken it. <laughs> okay. We'll see so what happens should... later. <laughs> um, but we should definitely call in something mm. to someone to cordon off this and make sure nobody else gets in here and Sage, I check on her. water. I think you should head back upstairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right, yeah. Sage, let's go get the car ready. Okay. The two That's what we're going to do. We're going to go get the car ready. All right. We're going to say you're going to start booking it up the stairs. What are the two of you doing down there? Well, we know that it's the job to contain and destroy. Not in that order. I think you should do the honors because I might miss. <laughs> do you want to shoot Dr. Gent? I mean, I don't want to. I will. So you can leave Dr. Gent if you so choose. I'm going to give you the breadth of your options here and explain the consequences. Uh, Dr. Gent is an innocent as far as everything is. Dr. Gent is not hostile towards you, has not been hostile towards anybody. As far as you can tell, she's doc has tried to document her own deterioration as fast as possible. She also hasn't asked you to kill her, um, but maybe she doesn't know how to figure that out. Um, if you shoot her, you're going, you will take a massive hit to your stability. You can leave her. That is an option. She is no threat to you down here. But okay. as it's long up to as you. she'll stay here, and I believe in, like, as long as Neem believes that she will stay here. And it's contained. And it's contained, then. Yeah, that's the important I think part. neither of us actually wants to shoot this person. It's no. just. Mm-hmm the mission that we were given and I need to find a way out of that mission. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's uh, it's definitely a complication. I would say it's fair at this point. Um, if you watch her, it's not entirely clear that she even knows how to use stairs anymore. So I don't think she's going anywhere. Okay. That I will take that. And then Hemlock will look at beam and say, if I get there, please, please do it. I, I, d I don't want to be that. <laughs> Fair. All right. I guess we should go join them. Yeah. Uh, we'll send a text message to the handler saying we found the source of the contagion, where it is, and that there is somebody far into the effects present. You get an acknowledgement message back of just noted. You're not right, sure what that's going to what's going to happen to Doctor. But you know, our job was to find it and report back. We have, have done that. You have found it. You have also <laughs> found somebody who she seems happy, but she doesn't really understand anything else. And you're not really sure she even knows what emotion is anymore. She might forget. How to, just... She might soon forget how to breathe. She's freaking me out. Let's go. <laughs> she just stands there. Actually, as you exit the room, she just turns around and continues standing where she was. Is she facing south? Mm hmm All right. As we get back out to the car, Hemlock is going to look at Rosewater and be like, I oh. think we need you to do a search for anything that has to do with choirs that are not your usual choir? Well, before they get the chance of doing that, Agent Sage and Agent Rosewater, there's a security guard that has pulled into the parking garage, and I need the two of you. Uh, how are you going to get Here. to the car without being detected or drawing attention? Del. <laughs> You're gonna use stealth. Start you know, with that. Stealthy. Or... Okay. Uh, what is <laughs> You're my just gonna... stealth? Mine's a ten. Mine's a thirty. It's better than ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, if any, if we, if we really, does this person look like they're? Are they? Do, do they look blank, or do they look like they have personality? No, looks like a regular security guard. Worst comes to worst, we flash the badges. Go and give me your are... You're going to try to sneak out to the car? 
We're going to try to sneak out to the car first, and okay. then if not, yes, flashing badges. I would say, Agent Rosewater, you can roll for the both of you because you are going to basically stealth in the scenario is you are going to tell Sage when to move. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and roll that. I feel like I've snuck into at least one building before, probably in college. Or snuck out of somewhere. Like, yeah, I've definitely done that. <laughs> but, you know, what budding black hat hacker hasn't snuck into the college's server room before? I tried to sneak out of the building once, but I got caught. And now Dude. I'm with Delta Green. <laughs> I was going to say, was it your house and with your mom? Uh nope. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 31. I got one over. Okay. Agent Neem, Agent Hemlock, you two are coming back up the stairs and what you hear is the car alarm for your car start to blare from the parking garage. It's not in the parking garage. We very particularly oh, did not well, park in the parking garage. Wherever you parked the car, the alarm starts to blare. <laughs> Oh, like the fuck. cat again. Mm -hmm. The cat is. <laughs> yes. Perch. <laughs> perch, perch. Ah, uh, well, that's probably not good. <sighs> haul ass up the stairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We haul ass out of there. And then we flash over to Agent Rosewater and Agent Sage, probably in some sort of panic as the car is. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the keys? I don't think either of you have the keys. Nope. Nope. Which yep. is why the alarm's going off, because yeah, we're exactly. still trying to get yeah. in. I think I would have given them the keys if it was like, go up and get the car ready. I mean, it wouldn't matter anyway. They failed horribly in the scenario. Yeah. They're probably... <laughs> I mean, I just want to make sure somebody still has the keys in their possession. <laughs> I mean, we probably, you probably have gave, the keys. probably so. gave them the keys, and instead of hitting unlock, hit the alarm button. We hit panic. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We panicked. At the disco. <laughs> panic at the business office screaming in tow and uh, yeah the two of you managed to come out here and see the two of them probably in various states of disarray uh, and you also see that security car not barreling but coming towards you oh, badges Gosh. badges badges. Uh, I would say you can try to get away if you want to but you can also badge if you want just let's get the fuck out of here Okay, okay if we're go. close enough to the car to run for it, we'll be like, just get in. Let's go. Okay. Who's driving? Name again. <laughs> Drive test, please. A 39 under by four? <laughs> okay. I mean, that's still a success, which is going to be good um, because... Um, My dice are really trolling me right now. That's that's okay. Uh, Agent Sage, go and roll me a d10, please. <laughs> Two. Two. You lose your left side mirror as you come barreling out of <laughs> out of here. And uh, you do manage to not get hit by the uh, security truck, which might be a little bit alarming at the fact that they were trying to, like, not pit maneuver you, actually ram your car. So Apparently, the sheriff has been talking. <laughs> Apparently. Well, that's what we knew to begin with. Yeah. So you do manage to drive away. You no longer have a left side mirror. Whatever, it's fine it anyway. Yeah, and I will say that the security guard is decently occupied with the fact that they probably hit something with the front of their vehicle now. So, what would you all like to do? Uh, now, I, I will ask Rosewater to do a search <laughs> for any anomalous choir references. In is is that weird like alien thing eight hours south that we maybe learned about yesterday? Yeah, that's what I was curious about too. Ooh, we have the journal. I want to open that and see if there's any references about the star people to acquire. Uh, it's just talking about the song of the star people, uh, which song? the journal but, is recorded but, at the uh, monument. But if it says the song, at the then she did say something about the song. Right. So <laughs> she mentioned the song where the song was heard. I which, think. Mm hmm. I think that it's pretty safe to say that Devil's Tower, where this is all about, is where we need to go. That's so yeah. far it's, away. It is, yeah, but sometimes the job is spread out more than we would like. Are we gonna die? Rosewater, anything else you need to do in town to cover tracks before we go? 
Gotta send a message, but I think other than that, I should be fine. Oh, you'll have plenty of time. So you're all driving to the uh, Devil's Tower? Yeah. I, I don't think we've... I think we all packed light enough that... Do we need to go back for anything? I mean, mm. if we lose clothes and whatever random things we left mm. there, we lose them. I, I have my messenger bag, which has everything, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. I bring disposable okay. toothbrushes. Yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> I will bring. Uh, I will send send the message though before we leave town. <laughs> okay. Well, as you're driving, what are those messages that you are sending? I'm gonna gonna send a message to Micah saying that we are, the job site is is moving. So whatever the nearest town near that monument is i'll tell him that's where i'm staying okay you don't get any reply that's fair uh you do get a message from simon saying that uh asking when you're going to be back because he has a surprise for you and he fucking does uh and just being like well you know i i think we're probably in our our last day of work hopefully fingers crossed as long as nothing horrible happens so uh the next day or so. Sure. Okay. Well, as you all are driving, um, Agent Sage, I would say your fiance's name is David. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, David sends the generic check-in message that they usually send every three or four days. Yeah. And uh, Agent Name, you're driving, so for safety purposes, we won't say you check your phone. Uh, <laughs> but you do feel a buzz a couple of times, so. I'll check it when we go get gas. Yeah, I mean, you got a long journey ahead of you. Um, Agent Hemlock, do you have, I don't think you have anybody you are currently in contact with, is that correct? I mean, unless something comes through for my missed team, no. Okay, I didn't think but so. But they know I'm off, so. Mm-hmm, it's okay. You don't get anything for this drive. Um. I will say that as you stop for gas on your journey, you see that it's a message from Josiah saying that he's been having some really strange dreams. Yeah, me too, buddy. Uh, might be something to bring up with your therapist. Uh, he doesn't respond after mentioning going to see the therapist. <laughs> It's okay. You all pile in. Is there anything you would like to do before you reach your destination? I want to know how Hemlock's doing. I mean... How are you doing? Yeah, how am I doing? Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm still in some pain from the gunshots. Mm -hmm. Keep staring at my hand. Just waiting. Your hand Does... isn't... Your hand Anything hasn't changed. mentally feel weird? That is maybe a question that is crossing your mind, and I would like you to give me a stability roll for this, please. That's a hundred. <laughs> okay, so you. go with that one you are about to lose five okay but you can choose to shunt off to somebody like uh, now you do have to roll but I will tell you that if you take five that is normally a temporary um, effect that hits you I mean the only thing I things I can shunt it off to are my missed team or psychologist. <laughs> I have only a seven in my like, Which <laughs> one is which one is it? Unless you want to take it all and I let's go psychologist. <laughs> okay, go and roll me a D4 please. A one. Okay. Your psychologist manages to save you from spiraling. Uh, <laughs> I imagine I'm texting her like Yeah. I'm having a really weird day. <laughs> What's her name? I, her name is 
Dr. Stevens. How this is going to happen for you is you are staring at your hand, thinking about the fact that you've come into contact with these things. You are messaging Dr. Stevens about the fact that you've had a day. Um, but there's a part of you that resents the doctor, especially with how aloof they are in their responses to you and the severity of this. As you are trying to convey your concern without directly doing so, and the thing that dawns on you is that Dr. Gent was a specialist in this field. Are you learned enough to even know what's happening to you? I mean, maybe a little, but I mean, my anything that I learned was more psychology, psychotherapy, mm -hmm. not... Not pharmaceuticals, though. Nope. So what I will say is that you start to wonder if there are things that you are forgetting. Things that maybe you didn't remember to begin with, but now you are attributing to this. And that paranoia starts to fill your mind as cool, you are cool, cool. wondering the things that you've forgotten, but you don't even realize that you did. So for the rest of you <laughs> who did not get exposed to such a thing, I will say that you arrive okay. at Monument. Now, probably there's a nap somewhere in that eight hours. It, nice, uh, nice nap. If you manage to get one, but sure, uh, we'll say you you get a little bit of a nap. Um, we won't go into the horrendous details of your dreams, but you definitely dream, and they are not ones that you would describe as pleasant. Lovely. But, you reach the Devil's Tower Park. It is very, very dark here. Let me get a good picture of it up for you, so you know what I'm... Having been to Devil's Tower at night, it is very dark. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no light out there, and the thing that you see, and it's interesting because it's kind of in the middle of just a bunch of forests and trees, it's like this pillar just jutting out from the ground. It's very hard to miss. And as you pull up to it, the thing that really draws your attention is that you can see a little light playing across near the top of this. Like it's moving up. On you. So you all arrive. You see that there is a car in the parking lot. As you get out that cold Montana, uh, I believe you said it was March, is just... It's now Wyoming, not Montana. Wyoming, excuse me, yes. That cold Wyoming March, the wind blowing around you, the smell of the rock in the forest, and the thing that you see is there is a car that is still running in front of you. It's not one that you recognize. Looks like it's a... Uh, just some old sedan. The door is open. Keys are still in it. That's what you see. Does it? Mm hmm? Does it smell like black mold? The inside of the car? Yes. And as you're looking at the car, you see that light go all the way up to the top and then disappear on the top. I think we gotta climb, guys. It's going to hurt so much. <laughs> so I don't know that there's actually a pathway up this thing. I don't think there is. There is. There is yeah, one? there okay. is. Perfect. Yes. That makes it so much easier. So, I've climbed it before, so. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Are you all going to climb it now? Yeah. What do you take with you? The gun. The trauma the kit. Things. Yeah, the uh, gun. Um the other grenades that we got. Sure. I'm going to leave my heavy messenger bag in the car. So you suit up. Which is good. Uh, and you climb this tower. Now, you the only thing that you really know going into this, and the thing that I want to be in the forefront of your mind as you climb, is 
how little you actually know of this scenario. You know that there's something about a song, about star people. You're starting to realize the things that the program does and the things that you have to deal with. And all of that really comes to a head as you go over the top of the monument. And now, correct me if I am wrong, Killian, the top of this monument doesn't have a whole lot of up there, right? It's pretty flat. Maybe a couple rocks, not much. It is flat, but I did just double check. Uh, you can climb most of the way up, but then to get to the top, you do have to have climbing gear because it okay. is sheer. <laughs> for the sake of our story, we'll say that there's a way for you to get up there. But uh, so you all reach the top, and as you come over the lip, there is not a whole lot up here to avert your vision from what you see in front of you, which is you see. Uh, Dr. Brent McCallson, or McCaslin, you see Christina Jacobs, and you also see that they have a variety of, like, boxes and instruments and things with them, chief of which is a large boombox is playing a tape. The sounds of the tape sound like insectoid throat singing, which they are mimicking as you Come over the top. Can I shoot I'll this? Can I shoot this? <laughs> yeah, put the, ask. The, the boom box. <laughs> yes, shoot the boom box. You want to try and shoot the boom box? I do, because I feel like this is the point where, like, the gonna... song and they're coming and they're heralding things, and none mm. of this sounds good. Okay. I will say this. The box is kind of in the middle of the two of them. Um, if you want to fire, that's fine. Do you want to shoot like right as you get over the lip and you will incur some amount of negative or are you going to move forward? They seem busy, right? They don't even appear to notice that you exist. Great. I'll be yeah. ready with maybe, a flashbang. Yeah, to maybe we with just in case. Maybe flashbang, <laughs> then shoot box. <laughs> but that'll. But the problem with that is it would also destroy my own night vision. Unless you close Fair. your eyes and you're prepared. <laughs> but maybe save the flashbang for a second. Yeah. For... yeah. Fair. I was going to say, we're, we will go with real life flashbangs where they don't they don't blind as much as they severely concuss. <laughs> so, <Fair>. yeah. <laughs> the blind is a temporary thing. That's uh, The concussion the, is forever. Yeah, the concussion <laughs> is more of the problem, yeah. <laughs> Buy her a concussion. It's forever. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you are stepping forward to mm -hmm. take this out. Okay, as you step forward to start to draw your sights, um, you see two men emerge from behind the crates that were there. Um, you didn't really notice them before, which is a little bit alarming. They have, they are not moving the way that the person was the last time. What you see is the two people singing that you know. You see two figures both of which are carrying um, M4 carbines, have black head to toe, have black masks, so you can't see their face. They also have night vision that is cranked down over their eyes. Now, this is the ones that... It, it looks creepy because the way that these are situated is there's three lenses that come out from the center that make it so you have a better field of vision. And that's just what you're staring at is these figures all clad in black. And uh, they don't waste any time before shooting at you. I would like to turn on the flashlight on my AK-47 as soon as I get a chance to try and blind their night vision. Sure. They're going like, to, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to duck and take cover. <laughs> yeah. So they're just going to start firing shots at all of you. Uh, we're going to see who. Okay, so, all right, that would be you. All right. Okay. Uh, one of them raises a rifle and takes a shot at you, Agent Rosewater. It just flies over your head, though. Yep. Uh, so the now, <laughs> the rest of you have an opportunity to tell me what you are going to do. So I am going to dive back behind cover. I'm turning on the flashlight. I'm going to try and blind them. <laughs> so, uh, I will... So who wants to go first, basically? <laughs> Uh, I will Are say, you two just taking cover? Because if I'm the only yeah. one doing mm -hmm. something, then <laughs> yeah, I would say I'm that taking the, cover to start with, and I then we'll say, see where it goes. So there's not really much cover to be found up here. I will say the cover yeah. that you do find is basically just going back the way that you came, like climbing back down and then ducking down underneath the lip so that it's not as likely for you to get hit. Um, 
because this is all just going to happen simultaneously. So as the two of you run, Agent Hemlock, you turn on your flashlight to try and blind them. Uh, you can only really put it at one of them against it's a high-powered light, uh, but you don't really need to roll to be able to do that. You succeed, and but you can tell that this person is training. Uh, they clip and begin to flip their goggles up, but that won't matter right now, because Agent Neem, what would you... You said you were going to take a shot at one of them, or...? No, I'm going to try to go for cover. Okay. Uh, uh, because I am not going to stand here and try to have a shootout sure. with the people who are tactically attired. I will say that the only cover really to be found up here is there's not many rocks. It's kind of a flat surface. You can either go back the way you came, or you can lay down, or you can kneel to make you less of a target. Now, if you go back the way you came, you're going to kind of be jamming each other up, but that mm. is a possibility for you. No, but if I... Would it be possible to... To, like, dive on the other side of the people who are singing from where these guys came, or no? Mm-hmm. They're okay. too far away. I would say, if you are trying to avoid damage, the most likely things that I would suggest are either kneeling or going prone. Would be the then best. I shall kneel sure. to make okay. myself a smaller target. Mm-hmm. And yes, now would be the good time for the flashbags. Sure. Are you... Are you going to actually throw them? Or are you going to shoot? Or what are you going to do? I guess is my question. Because you can kneel. It's like you just quickly do that. That would be a response. That would be a training response to make mm-hmm. yourself smaller and give yourself stability to be able to fire. So what would you like to do? Then to- I will take a shot at the one who w- is not occupied with taking his sure. night vision Go off. Go ahead and roll. Uh, you don't need to take any negatives because they are as out in the open as you are. 36 under my 60. Wonderful. Uh, Because you have a rifle that is a bit heavier, it does more damage than your pistol. So go ahead and roll me a d12, please. Eleven. How do you kill this person? I am going to say that I have a really nice, like, grouping around their chest but Mm. one actually slides like through the throat like in the gap Mm -hmm. between um chest protection and head protection sure so you're firing center mass like you would normally you know bang 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 and then that one clips their jugular and they fall they're not instantly dead but they're probably not going to unless i got care immediately Uh, i mean they're not immediately shooting at me which is the yeah, you have you have incapacitated them all enough. Uh, they're probably going to be dead within the next few minutes. Uh, all right. So the other one has now clipped his headgear back up and he has his rifle on a um, can't remember what these are called. I just know them as quick straps, but it's basically like a strap so you can instantly bring it up from a side sling. position. Yes, yeah, sling. There you go. So he's yeah, brought that's the this... same thing I figure Hemlock has. <laughs> yeah. So he's brought this back up and you can tell by his movement that this is training. He's going to take another shot. Um, this time he's going to go for you, Hemlock, because you blinded him. And he can see that you have a rifle. And I'm standing. Yeah, <laughs> and you're standing, yes. Uh, Agent Hemlock, you are going to take eight damage after your armor absorbs some of it. I have one hit point left. <laughs> okay, so what I will say is you've got your armor on and you fire, you are standing because you were just trying to blind him, right? You were in a yeah. shooting stance. Okay, so you've exposing a lot of yourself. Uh, he raises that back up, goes bang, bang, bang into the center mass uh, and kind of a similar situation to Agent Neem. However, this one clips you across your... Um, collarbone here and you can you can feel that the bone is shattered right through here as you go down and fall down to the ground you will not be firing a rifle anytime soon okay uh agent hemlock is occupied what (laughs) the three of you what would you like to do I'm gonna. Rosewater is just gonna be like, mm, I don't like this. Uh, and is. Uh, I do have a. Uh, I do have a 40 in firearms. So I'm going to try and uh, 
remember everything I have learned at the range and take a shot. Okay, go for it. These dice don't fuck me. Holy shit. They did not fuck me. This is 39 out of 40. Excellent. Go and roll me your damage, please. Uh, and I just have a regular pistol, and that's what a D... Correct. Uh, D10 for your D10. service pistol. Mm-hmm. Seven. Seven. Okay. So you pop off a couple rounds. Uh, you do see a, mo- a good portion of it hits the chest protection, but you do... Uh, some of them do land hits, um, like, near the arms and stuff like that, and uh, you're just kind of... You probably don't have that great of... Yeah, it's probably not great. Yeah. Control. So you probably clip him across the thigh or something like that, but you've you've hit him, but he hasn't gone down. Mm. Um, Agent Neem, what would you like to do? Or Agent Sage and Agent Neem, excuse me, the two of you are still active. No, I think Sage hasn't gone yet, so. Yeah, Sage, what would you like to do? Well, Sage uh, was hiding last round. <laughs> I was hiding last round. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of peek over and see the situation. Yeah, it looks not it, looking uh, great. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't look good. I, um, Yeah, I'm vaulting myself up. I brought the trauma kit. Mm-hmm. I'm, running to, to oh, I'm okay. running to Agent Hemlock and okay. getting started um, on that. So as you break cover and run towards Agent Hemlock, um, you are going to hear something that is you're not really sure what it is but it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand and you hear a buzzing sound like the beating of massive insect wings no time for that um i just try to shake it off this is this is all going to happen while you're running (laughs) great it's okay though um Here's what I want you to do, Agent Sage. You are going to make me a dodge roll, please. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. I have a 50. Mm, I don't make it. That's a 61. No. Okay, Agent Sage. Uh, What is, well, what the rest of you see, and Agent Hemlock, you see Agent Sage running towards you, um, is... Agent Sage is mid-stride, running, and then you hear a sound that sounds like a motorcycle engine revving, and then a pop. And then where Agent Sage was just a moment ago is now a crater. Agent Sage, you are not completely dead, but most of the bones in your body have been shattered except for your left arm and like this portion of you and you see the culprit of this now which is a large winged thing floating above the two singing individuals it does not look humanoid it looks like a praying mantis except its face is kind of all over the place and it is holding a large cylindrical alien looking weapon the all of you really can't help but look at this thing. All of you are going to need to give me stability checks, please. Agent Sage, you don't need to because you can't see this. You're in a hole. Uh, I made it. Okay. I, I also made it. I rolled another hundred. I kid you not. <laughs> okay. Agent Rosewater, Agent Neem, the two of you are going to lose two. Okay. That's fair. Okay. Agent Hamlock, you got lucky. You also only lose two. I would definitely say that in this moment, I should also make you roll for the extreme violence of what just happened, Agent Sage, but I think that this particular moment overrides that. Uh, you see this thing that is not humanoid. You have never seen this thing before in your life, and unfortunately, you will see this thing until the day that you die in your head. And you see this large winged thing that just flattened. As far as you know, Agent Sage is dead. And after that, it's all of your turns again. So, Agent Sage, as I said, you 
are almost dead mm-hmm. with this. You, the bones in your body have been shattered. You have been hit with something that created the gravitational force of essentially a building being dropped on top of you. It is a mystery that you are still alive at this moment. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. For the rest of you. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Agent Hemlock, I don't think you're in any position to actually like do much, I think. I think probably pull a pistol. Stage, take that. I would uh I, I assume I took the handgun back from Sage. Uh, I mean you would have had a sidearm, yes. Yeah. And uh, I imagine it's just like in an ankle holster and I'm already on the ground and my legs probably bent weird. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'll pull that and I'm gonna try and shoot the insectoid thing. <laughs> sure. Now is the time for the flashback. <laughs> now is the time That is that is a good but I, I can't do athletics right now. Yeah, Agent Agent Hemlock is pretty incapacitated. <laughs> yeah. Just roll it over yeah, there. I don't I don't think that would go that far. You might throw it in Agent Sage's hole, which would not be better for Agent Sage. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, this I'll, is awful. I'll let you produce your pistol and take a shot at this thing out of rage. I, I could understand that. I rolled an 84 out of 60. I did not make it. Okay, yeah, Ugh. your rage is blinding you as you fire off these rounds into uh, the space near that thing. Agent Rosewater, Agent Eam, what would you two like to do? The the insect definitely does look like a bigger threat than guy with gun. I'm I will uh, Neem, are you gonna shoot at the guy with the gun or the the insect? Um I'm already facing the guy with the gun. Go for the insect. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll do I'll do that. I'll shoot at the insect. Because they are both actually huge problems. <laughs> They're are incredibly you, huge problems. Are you gonna continue to use your sidearm? Are you going to try to get Hemlock's uh p- rifle? What do you want to do? That is technically on the ground at this point. I don't think there's any reasonable way Hemlock would still have that in their hands. I mean, yeah, I guess I think I will. Like, seeing that, seeing it on the ground, run forward, scoop it up, and do the best I can. Sure. Okay, go ahead and take a shot at this thing. Okay. It also is not in any kind of cover, so... I would say with its size, go ahead and give yourself a plus uh, 10% too. Please. A plus ten percent. So would that have uh, made you hit Agent Hemlock with plus ten? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Hmm. Uh, Agent Rosewater, yes, plus ten. Plus ten. So I subtract ten from what I, I roll. No, you would add ten to your result and see if the target number is still under it. So you would add ten to your baseline roll. So if your firearms was at a forty, it's now at a fifty. It's now at a fifty. Okay. I mean, it's it's gonna hit. That's an eleven. Okay. Go and roll me damage, please. <laughs> And that's a, uh, that's that is a critical hit, yes. So D twelve, D twelve, D twelve, yes, please. All of those first person shooter video games coming in clutch. <laughs> and that is that is a ten to shoot this bug to, sh- to damage this bug thingy. Okay, so as you fire off these rounds, because you got your critical hit, uh, that ten damage that you give to it cuts off its, and you're just like. It's not an automatic weapon, but you are just mm. pulling the trigger. Uh, you clip its left wings and arm, and it falls. Now, as you do that, oh, so you've downed one of them, and it falls down the side, or what you assume is falls down the side. Uh, you see another one come up from another side. This one isn't carrying a weapon, okay. but it get, reaches down to grab the two people. So, Agent Neem, what would you like to do? Well, I gotta take care of the guy with the carbine. Mm -hmm. That's our first priority. Like, Mm -hmm. if the other thing doesn't have a giant weapon, great. Them getting away is actually not my top priority right now. That's fine. You gonna take a shot at the guy? Yeah, I am. Okay. World three. That's a hit. Go and roll me damage, please. Eh, only a five damage. Um. Well, you did some damage to him earlier with some pistol rounds, I believe, didn't you? Yes, Agent Rosewater did. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, 
your five actually because you have armor piercing rounds does go through and does manage to kill this person now it's not as clean as your other one this one is just bang 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 and then take some hits and falls yeah i'm uh, okay with that so long as yeah. he's not shooting at me anymore uh agent sage you are still moving and down there uh you can't move much you actually can't feel much at this point but again you are alive um <clears throat> what or is anybody going to do anything about the creature that is carrying this two? It's now got them in its hands, or what you assume are hands, and it's flying up into the sky. It's not too far away that it would be difficult to shoot at it, but if you uh-huh. want to just let it go, you can just let it go. I don't think that's a good idea. I think I we'd try and aim for the wings. Take out the wings! <laughs> Okay. I'm lucky else. <laughs> uh, so it's not going to respond to you. So all of you get, if you all of you want to shoot at it, you get the chance of shooting at it. Uh, yeah, Agent Sage, I will okay. even let you be able to reach down to your side holster and do so since it's high enough in the air. Yeah. <laughs> you will take in minus 20, Sage, because you're not in any sort of firing stance. Oh, well, <laughs> then um, I have a zero firearms that if there's a minus 20, <laughs> oh, and I crit failed anyways with a 77. It, oh, it jams. It yeah. jams. I'm, I'm sorry. <gasps> It it's, definitely, well, it's got the got building crushed. dropped on yeah. it. it yeah. When you got crushed, the mechanism of this did too. So it's not doing anything. <laughs> but the rest I rolled of you... a 92. Oh, okay. Oh, so you fire wide. All right. <laughs> I got a 30. Off. I got All a 30 right. under 40. And, and okay. I got a 29. <laughs> okay. Both of you go and roll damage, please. I rolled a 10 on my damage. I rolled a 5 on my damage. Okay. What you manage to do is you shoot at this thing and you cut off the arm and one of the wings it is still in flight and you see Christina drop just you don't see where she goes but you see her drop and at this point this thing is flying very fast and is now out of sight with Dr. Gant, or Dr. Brent so congratulations you've managed to not die and you've sort of taking care of the problem. What would you all like to do now? Your two assailants have bled out at this point. Um, Ow! Yeah, I think... um, I have a 10 in first aid. This is so bad. I have also Um, a 10 in first aid. (laughs) I have 80. The two! The two with any first aid are down. Yeah. Sage, I'm not really sure that you could probably direct people a little bit. Bre- yeah. di- speaking is probably difficult for you at this point, but I will yeah. say that you can kind of tell them what to do. Uh, I don't really know that there's much to do for you. Now, you can be carried. Like, you could go seek help, but... Uh, yeah. Pass out if anyone tries to move me. I, I will say this, because we... You have taken care of what you've been asked to do, but do you want to do anything with the things that are left in front of you? You have a tape player that is still playing the same song. You have a couple instruments and you have two dead. Well, yes, you have two dead people. Presumably a third one in the middle of the plane somewhere. I can yeet this cassette player off this thing, but that's probably not a wise idea. Mm -hmm. No, definitely Mm -hmm. set fire to the cassette. Mm -hmm. Sure. We got thermite. Yeah, you can put it on a pile and throw a thermite grenade on top. Um... And then I Make sure ascertain you the clear identity away of any sagebrush in the area, or that will start a yeah. fire up there because there's no. We already got we already got sage out of the way. It's fine. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um. Okay. Do we recognize our attackers from the sheriff's office? Uh, pulling open their masks, you don't know them. They are two um, men that look like they could blend into any crowd. Uh, they also don't have any kind of identification on them. One of them does have a phone, which is currently locked. Can I That's use his thumb to unlock it? A code. Rude. Agent and Rosewater I, might be able to get into it. With some and time. I toss it over to Rosewater. Yeah. <laughs> with some time. Yeah. Um, okay. I think so. we should call in a helicopter life flight. That might be a good idea and say, uh, I don't know, we... We were tracking these two people here. They were. How are you going to explain the, the fire? 
I don't think we've set fire to anything yet. Also, it's just a thermite grenade. It's not going to like burn it to non-existence. It mm. basically just slags it, so it will still be there. It will just be a pile yeah, of, and, and, you know. <laughs> they, they, they threw the thermite grenade on it yep. to uh, <laughs> stop us from learning anything. And yeah, the two people were... with guns. I mean, it's fine if you want to call them back. To that's fine. And, you know, one of the local extremist groups who uh, one of them they, got away. They're they the one that kid, the they kidnapped these scientists from a local place for reasons. We got them here. Unfortunately, two of our agents are injured and need medevac. I mean, basically, like mm. we were investigating a domestic terrorist incident. Mm-hmm. Uh, followed a lead to a um, a cell meeting. Mm-hmm. We were made at said meeting, and uh, things have gone badly. We managed to take down two of the cell operatives, but unfortunately, a c- two of them are in the wind. Spoken like a person with very high bureaucracy. Which one of you has a high bureaucracy? I think that's Neem. <laughs> I have a 30. I have a 50. <laughs> and Janine, what's your bureaucracy on? 40. Okay. <laughs> I have the highest 10. bureaucracy. 10. 10. Uh, <laughs> here is what I will say in this scenario. You call in the medevac. Um, you... Is the goal to make it so that they find the other things or no? It is to make well, it so they don't find the other things. We don't they don't find the weird stuff. You can push like, them off. Can, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll say that and we'll say that oh no, on Agent Sage fell. Okay. As well. Uh, <laughs> they had a this... concussive they had a concussive yeah. um explosive yeah. in an IED. Okay. Um Yeah. I, I will apparently say. not frag like mm-hmm. not attached to any frag mm-hmm. and it did concussive damage to Agent Sage yeah okay so you're going to push them and the equipment off of the side of this monument is that yeah. correct okay. that's a long fucking way down so 837 <laughs> feet yeah it there won't be much of that left when it reaches the bottom so that's fine um, I will say that your what you tell them works well enough. Agent Hemlock and Agent Sage, you are medevac Um You have planted the necessary things that you needed to. Um, Agent Rosewater and Agent Neem, are you, what are you going to do after the two of them are taken away? They're not going to take you. You can walk. Yeah. That's basically their, how they work. <laughs> They're not yeah. going to take you if you're fine. <laughs> uh, but I will call the handler. Sure. Um, and arrange for a meeting as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. So as you get down to the car, um, which presumably is where you're going to do that, uh, you call the handler. The handler sa- asks for the regular update, says, okay, uh, yes, we can set up a debrief. Uh, the The things that they were interacting with, are they still there? Or are they still around? The objects or the creatures? The creatures. They have one of them, I believe. And actually, if we're climbing down, then we should be able to see if the yeah, one that you we can, hit the first one. You can down look. There? Uh, no, they're not. No, neither of them is still here. Okay. No yes. evidence of either of them. Any casualties for us? Uh, Hemlock and Sage are critically injured and receiving emergency care. Okay. Uh, Hemlock might need some isolation time. A little quarantine. From exposure? Yes. Noted. Come back to the air, to the base. Engine Rosewater, are you getting into that phone? Days. If we're all expected to go back to the base, I guess I have to, unfortunately. 
So you're trying to hack into the phone you found from them? Is oh yeah, the hack into the phone. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll I'll do the thing. Okay. So here is what I will say for us: is you finish your call with the handler. The handler tells you to come immediately to the base. We, from our nice cinematic point of view, we see Agent Hemlock and Agent Sage being uh, flown out. Agent Sage has a million things hooked up to them at the moment, uh, various uh, drips and things like that. Agent Hemlock less so, um, being carried off to the nearest hospital. We go back and look at Agent Neem, who finishes their call, hangs up the phone. And then we look over at Agent Rosewater, who will assume that you're driving on your way to the base. Takes you a good minute, Agent Rosewater, to break into this device. Um, this device doesn't have a whole lot on it, but you do find a string of conversations. The conversation string is tracking all of you, not by name, just by look, identification, something like that. There's a correspondence with another unknown number. And as we finish, we, and you're scrolling up in this conversation, you see that these two men are also from the program. And that is where we will close. So thank you all so so very much for joining us on this final evening of our playthrough of extreme Athelia by shane ivy i have been alex and i have been your handler for this session of delta green but i would be remiss if i did not mention the fantastic cast that did a wonderful job of playing through our scenario here and let's go ahead and uh give them a chance to give them some give them a chance to do some shout outs uh playing as agent sage we have abigail uh, I'm Abigail the Nerd. That's Abigail with two Bs. You can find me on all my socials under Abigail the Nerd. And just check out my link tree to see what projects I'm in. Excellent, excellent. And I'm sure we'll see you in many more. And speaking of somebody who I'm sure will be in many more, we have, playing as Agent Neem, we have Pooja. Hi, I am Pooja, and you can find me on the internet as Forgotten Saves. If you want to hear me play more TTRPGs, uh, you know, for reasons, <laughs> you can find me on the back catalog of Happy Jack's RPG, 12-Sided Stories podcast, and, you know, some other fun and exciting QCG bite-sized adventures. Indeed we can. And another person who I'm sure you will be seeing quite a bit more of in the coming, <laughs> and seeing quite a bit more of playing Agent Hemlock, it is Killian. Hi, I'm Killian. Uh, you can find me as Darcy Relish all over the internet. This was a wild ride. I'm surprised I survived, but I did it. <laughs> I still can't uh, believe we all survived, technically. Technically. Uh, but you can find me over on Rainbows and Razor Blades Productions, my channel r and Production on Twitch, where I run uh, Cyberpunk on Fridays, and we've got a bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, you can also find me every other Sunday starting... Uh, that doesn't matter. You can find me every other Sunday on Spectrum TTRPG, where I play a Purple Ranger in a Power Rangers game. Uh, so much fun. But keep an eye on my socials for anything else I've got going on. Excellent, excellent. And finally, last but certainly not least, you have most assuredly seen her before in some of the other QCG productions. If you have not seen her, you have 100% heard all of the amazing audio wizardry that she does. Playing Agent Rosewater, we have Aubrey. Hello, uh, I'm Aubrey, and you can find me everywhere on the internet at Mad Queen Cosplay or the Mad Queen. Uh, and yeah, I'm all over the place. QCG, as Alex said, if you've not seen me, you've heard my work. Uh, I do, do a lot of things over here, just in most projects. So, you know, in some way. Uh, you can also find me at uh, Goblets and Gaze for our uh, all of our lovely stuff over there. We are probably. Uh, 
running uh, Last of Eden's Vices, our Vampire the Masquerade show, if, uh, around this time, if you want to go check that out. Excellent, excellent. And finally, I have been Alex, again, your handler for this evening. If you like what I have done and want to see more of what I have done, you can find it most likely here at QCG because this is I am one of the GMs and producers here. Uh, if you like this stuff and you want to, for some reason, follow me on my socials, you can do that too. My social, my social name, <laughs> my username for all socials is alexadm89. Now, everybody, if you enjoyed our session here and would like to find more of Queen's Court shows, please do check out our YouTube, as well as you can find our stuff on your favorite podcast app. We have some amazing shows for Delta Green called Vampire the Masquerade, Pathfinder, all sorts of wonderful things. And if you've been through all of that, you've been through our entire catalog and you want more, do head on over to our Patreon where you can find exclusive art, posts, and even some episodes some of which are ran by myself. All right, everybody. Again, thank you all so, so much for joining us this evening. Thank you all again to my fantastic cast for playing through Extremophilia, and we will see you all next time.